take a shortcut. Come Ty, wake up, it's 5.30 in the morning bro. Hello. Time to go. We're on the road. You guys are already ready. Is that a shower? Ready to go? Getting the overalls on? It's cold. <laughs> Damien Van Ness, um, been racing with uh, Ashley for the past uh, year and um, yeah, we're going strong together, building a good relationship, uh, we've been best mates for a long time. I'm just busy working out all the, all, all the fuel, the, um, fuel for each service park, so when we come in I can tell the service crew that 20, 20 litres, so we've got so many k's to do and yeah, all the rest of that, pretty simple. <laughs> My name's Simon Vasey Lal, I am uh, the navigator for the Yato Tools Rally team, I'm also the computer technician. And uh, yeah, Guy and I have been doing rally now for four years together. Uh, we're just about to go into holding, so after holding the rally's not. Welcome to the fifth round of the South African National Rally Championship. We are here in Cullinan for the Imperial Toyota Cullinan Rally. Leroy Poult and Alvin Kutsia lead the championship by 16 points from Hans Weiss and Bjorn de Gant in the Volkswagen. The route covers 12 special stages and some 155 kilometers of absolutely flat out spectacular dirt gravel racing. We'll bring you the action as the day unfolds. This stage, stage one, right outside the prison starts in about five minutes time so we need to get ready.
join you now on stage three where the cars are due in the next 20 minutes or so. Um, we have results for the first stage. The first stage, uh, within first two Ks, Leroy Poulter took out a fence post, which is not what you really want to do when you're trying to win a South African Rally Championship. Anyway, Mark Renier was fastest by three seconds from Leroy Poulter. Third was Hergen Fecken. We have the top uh, six covered by just over nine seconds. It's going to be very, very tight. Although it was an opening stage, short, tight, eight and a half, eight and a half kilometers long. Um, stage two is much, much longer, and we'll see what happens after that one. And this is another short, tight, very technical stage. <laughs> We're in the spectacular surroundings of Bronkospreit, as you can see it really, really is beautiful out here. Anyway, after stage three, uh, Mark Grenier had a problem with his gearbox after the first stage, took penalties, service penalties, and he is down in ninth place. Leroy Polter leads from teammate Hergen Fecken, both of course in Castrol to Adi Yaris's. In third place we have Hans Weiss in the Volkswagen Sassel Racing Polo. Fourth place, Jopi van Niekerk, and in fifth is young Hink Lotergan, who, by the way, a week ago was rallying in Austria, where he came second overall. Phenomenal effort from the 20-year-old. Pretty awesome. You're enjoying yourself, getting yeah. nice and dusty, eh? Yeah, horribly. <laughs> class basically Guy Bottrell and Chad van Bearden are picking up where they left off on the Volkswagen rally last month they are just trading tenths of a second uh, Chad van Bearden took the lead and Guy was just 0.6 of a second behind after the second stage uh, Chad opened up his gap to 4.6 seconds and something has happened to Guy we don't know yet what happened but he is now 20 seconds behind Chad van Bearden with uh, Tilo Hummel in second place. So 1600 class is again a really, really exciting fight. We're now on stage five. Um, just behind me there is a spectacular jump which every driver says they will be taking flat out. So we hope to show you some really, really nice airtime and super slow-mo shots. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, yeah, we're pretty happy with how the day went. Um, from when we, we won the first stage, um, we continued strong from there, and I think we won four stages. We drew a stage, which was, was very interesting. And then well done to Ernie, which um, he, he won a stage. Um, the last stage, we developed a, a misfire about halfway through the stage. Um, we definitely lost time there, um, but it could have been a lot worse. We got it to the end of day one and um, we're happy to be leading by 13 seconds. Today was a bit of a tough day for us. We, we're struggling a bit with uh, the traction and uh, the power of the engine at the moment. Um, but uh, we're working on a few things for tomorrow. Hopefully we can get it sorted and try make up a few places. I don't know how much time we've lost uh, towards the end of the day now, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. But we've just finished uh, day one. We've had a tusky day. Uh, we've ended up second so far. Just uh, I think we're about 12 seconds behind Chad. But uh, yeah, it's really hard out there. The, you know, it's very loose, very sandy, very dusty. It hasn't rained up here for a long time, so uh, the dust is playing havoc. Uh, we're battling to get the drive down. But uh, yeah, the guys are working hard uh, to get the cars ready for tomorrow. Uh, it's going to go into park for May tonight, and then uh, we'll pick it up nice and early tomorrow morning. Uh, so we've had a good day, me and Ernie van der Volt in car 95. Uh, started off uh, a f bit of a scrappy first stage, made a few mistakes. Stage two went better for us. I can't really think of much happening there. <laughs> so, uh, stage three was a good stage, it was a new stage for everyone, so we felt we had a good chance there to push, and we did. Set a good time, uh, and then we've had a really good afternoon. Uh, we've had a really good day today. Um, pretty much, we started off with me pushing too way too hard in the beginning, so we lost a lot of time to Guy and to, to Chad, so then in the end we thought we'd clean it up on the second stage, and again we closed up the gap, and then the third stage I made a, a royal stuff up and overshot in the second last corner, and had to reverse this in the dust, and. Yeah, we came to service, tried to regroup, changed up the settings on the suspension and carried on pushing, but yeah, the guy and Chad are giving us quite a hiding today, so hopefully I think we will <laughs> go back on the, go look at our onboard and change up some of our notes and see where we're going wrong and hope go for a good fight tomorrow and see if we can climb up to podium. We've reached the end of day one of the Imperial Toyota Cullinan Rally and Toyota is certainly happy their cup runneth over for they are first and second um, overall. Leroy Polt and Alvin Kutsia and the Castrol Yaris are leading teammates Hergen Fecken and Carolyn Swan by 15 seconds. A further five seconds back is Hans Weiss and Bjorn de Gant, our regular European visitors in the Volkswagen Sassel Racing Polo. Um, tomorrow is going to be a hell of a fight for the podium. In fourth place is Jarpi van Niekerk. Uh, Mark Crenier, as we said earlier, had uh, gearbox problems and took a time penalty. He's down in sixth place, but he is making up time. He, he um, was in ninth and he's made up three places. One of my teammates here, Marco Himmel in the, in the polo, he was really also doing well. But I think the pace was so hot at the front, they made a small mistake and uh, yeah, one mistake and, and it's over. They put the car on its roof and uh, same story for them. Super rally today and uh, see where we can go. Figure out what was the problem on the gearbox because we lost all drive and we cannot see anything that is wrong with the gearbox. So it's a big puzzle. In the Super 1600 class, we have Chad van Bearden who's leading uh, Guy Bottrell by 11 seconds. Now Chad and Nico Swartz in their Bearden construction polo um, have had a clean run, they've dominated so far and you know it's holding thumbs for everybody. I'm sure everybody would like to see a different winner for a change, maybe perhaps, except of course the people behind me at Yato Tools. Guy Bottrell had a mechanical problem, uh, dropped down to third place, he's back into second and Ernie van der Waltz and James Aldridge in the Ferrodo Ford Fiesta are in um, a very fine third place. So we have three different manufacturers in the top three in Super 1600.